even within India, it sparked off a debate, a bit, bit of a predictable debate. The Agni 5 launched today, and there are people who've been playing it down and saying it's no great achievement. Nothing, something should be India should be very proud about. With me tonight is uh, from Tiruvananthapuram, M K Bhadra Kumar, former diplomat, former deputy high commissioner to to Pakistan. Air Marshal P S Aluwalia, former Air Officer Commanding in Chief, South and Western Region. Brigadier Mahalingam joins the debate tonight, and General Bakshi stays on. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Air Marshal Aluwalia, you've been saying through the day today that you know there's nothing to get too excited about this missile launch. I mean, it puts India in a Super 6 league, it gives us a deterrence vis-a-vis -vis China and it is an immediate response to the Chinese deployment, gives us an option at least given their missile deployment in Tibet. Why have you, Air Marshal Aluwalia, as a former senior Indian Air Force officer, been running down the importance of this particular launch? Ornab, I think you've got it all wrong. I don't know who has communicated this at all. I, I definitely have been saying that this is something which is a feather in the cap of technology, missile technology, and which has given us and will give us even into the future a great strategic depth. So I think it's a miscommunication if you have understood me wrong, uh, but I do apologize if that's the impression I've created, uh, which is not true. Well, there, I, I heard you wrong in that case because I was told that you say that 5,500 kilometer uh, missile with a range of that is not going to give us the kind of deterrence that we should have vis-a-vis -vis China and that there is an exaggeration of the impact of this particular missile. Negative. Negative. I, I, I strongly condemn whoever has passed this message to you, Ordab, uh, because it's total miscommunication. I take your point and I take your correction. Uh, General Bakshi, there are some who believe that this does not give us the deterrence we need. Deterrence is through diplomacy, not through missiles. Negative. I would like to state that countries like China only respect power. And in this, you know, deterrence is a function of credibility and capability and the demonstrated will to use those capabilities. To that extent, technologically, it was essential to demonstrate the capability to target the northeastern quadrant of China, which, control, which contains the key command and control target of the national capital region of Beijing. China has had New Delhi in its crosshairs for the last 30 years, three decades. It is time to repay that compliment and to ensure that nobody gets tempted to use this capability. Deterrence means you prevent an action from happening by closing unwarranted windows of vulnerability. To that extent, I think it's a fantastic achievement. We have straight away, we have not gone through the liquid fuel route, which China had also started with the Dongfeng 5, which is a liquid fuel intercontinental ballistic missiles. And then, like we left the Prithvi behind, they also moved to the solid Dongfeng 31 and 31A. We have straight away gone to a very, very logical, you know, all solid missile uh, route. And you see, this increases your response timings, which is very essential when you have a no first use policy. For the first time, we have the MIRV capability. It can carry three to ten missiles. So one missile can sort of, you know, strike three to ten targets in the, in the, in the targeted country. It also enables better penetration of anti-ballistic missile defenses. Because the moment uh, uh, incoming missile is able to triplicate itself, replicate itself ten times, you know, the anti-missile systems, ballistic missile systems can be defeated. It is a container-borne missile. It can, therefore, be carried in a road mobile mode, in a rail mobile mode, and it lends itself to being placed on our nuclear submarines, which we have now gotten. The, our own Arihant is, uh, is, is already under sea trials. It will complete our triad, and it will give us even longer range. In the days to come, I'm very sure we will be able to add on to this capability and to be able to match the ranges that possibly the Chinese, you know, uh, Dong Feng 31 and 31A have now. I don't think that should be very difficult at all. The accuracy, you know, the, the, the seeker range finder system, the accuracy of this missile is a thing to be tremendously proud of. 
we, we, we are all, almost within 10 meters, you know, where we have hit. So, so in I think that's a very, very, uh, very, very heartening feature of this entire, you know, missile development I, program. My, my concern I today, as a nation, my concern today, my, 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 point, time, my point of focus tonight is on the Chinese response, which I find fascinating, especially because uh, Mr. Bhadra Kumar, you know, in November 2009, they secretly, secretly test this missile, which they have now gone and installed and they've placed it in, in the Tibetan Autonomous Region. They secretly tested the missile that the general referred to, the Dong Feng. While they relish their missile, why have they responded in this sort of extremely nervous and shaken and rattled manner today, uh, Mr. Badra Kumar? You see, the... Uh it's a, it's a deterrent weapon and China doesn't think that we are going to use against China this particular thing. Uh, it's not within the realms of possibility. As far as China is concerned, it has lived under the shadow of this kind of missile deployment vis-a-vis -vis the Soviet Union for decades. The issue here is from the Chinese perspective, from the, this commentary which you seem to be alluding to, uh, it's a very interesting commentary. It looks at the politics of it. Uh, it, first of all, uh, it doesn't uh, criticize India's right to have this deterrent. It avoids any kind of uh, imputation that this is a threat to regional stability. It in fact goes to the extent of over complimenting India, saying that the entire nation is rooting for it. I'm not very sure about it, but that's what the Chinese think. And they say that India has the capacity to do it, the Western countries have not impeded India, etc., etc. Now, as far as the politics is concerned, they make two, three points. One is, if, uh, uh, if there is any kind of uh, um, uh, thinking that this is going to solve the disputes in India-China India relationship, that is... But a that's a bitter commentary. Secondly... But one second. The, the commentary you alluded to, no, which I presume is the commentary in the Global Times, which secondly, I have also read, is, is Mr. Bhadra Kumar a, a commentary of a very bitter nation a nation that is bitter at the no, fact that not. this with this missile launch we uh, have achieved see. a high level of of nuclear missile deterrence don't you find it bitter mr gosami yes. you are a ceo and a very busy person i am a pensioner i get more time to reflect on these things i read it very carefully so let me at least you know explain to you so that you understand better you know, it says that if uh, the, the, the feeling is that this will trigger an arms race, uh, well, that's not, uh, we are barking up the wrong tree. It's not going to happen because China certainly will not surrender in terms of an arms race. But the important point is it speaks about the relationship. And the relationship, it said that you have a choice about the relationship. You can have a friendly relationship or you can have a situation where we barely tolerate each other and China can learn to live with both. And then it says that the most important thing is in the geopolitics of the Asian region, it is how India-China relationship is going to evolve, I, which would be a major I, I, I'd like to ask you. I think it's a, I'd like it's a to very ask you, compliment. Mr. Badra you know? Kumar, if, mm. I may, if I may ask you something. And please, Mr. Badra Kumar, don't flatter me. I have a lot of time on my hands and I'm sure you're busier than me. The question is tonight, very simple, that China says in that commentary that for the foreseeable future, India will stand no chance in an arms race with China. In other words, I read that. I don't know what you read. I read that as saying, come on, let's have an arms race. We'll continue to be two steps ahead from you. It goes on to say, we should develop a friendly relationship. One minute. Even if this is not achieved, we should at least tolerate each other and learn to coexist. In other words, we can coexist, we can tolerate each other as long as you are the puny neighbor. But if you try to flex your muscles, if you try to achieve nuclear missile deterrence, that will be difficult to achieve. We are getting an interjection tonight before I go to Brigadier Mahalingam. Uh, General Bakshi wants to come in. Yes, General Bakshi. No, not, not at all. General Bakshi, please. Not yes. at all. You know, actually it you says know, at one know, point there's a very that the geopolitics of Asia a, a very is going important to depend point on that I would like to make. And that is that, you know, China has consistently been refusing to acknowledge India as a nuclear weapons power. It has been saying that India has unrealistic big power ambitions. Exactly. So I think a dose of realism, you know, would be very healthy for China. 
because it cannot be in that denial mode and then get into policy postures that could be unwarrantedly you know uh, provocative which it has been it has been making pronouncements which you know uh, it has been objecting to our prime minister going to arunachal pradesh exactly. our raksha mantri going to arunachal pradesh you know and if you just as much as do oil drilling in the south china sea we have been getting grim warnings this is not the way you push around a country of india's stature and i think some bit of dose of realism you know and this kind of a, they they need to get out of this feeling that india has unrealistic big power ambitions it is not a nuclear weapon state it is not a missile power well you can close your eyes now uh, if it, you like 